Hello Stars, my name is Blue, and today we are lost in Morgan and the Sun Glare by Seth Dickinson. This was a request, and as uh, someone who did used to read Seth Dickinson in school, I thought, why not? <clears throat> I have not read Morgan and the Sun Glare, and it's offering an audio version, which is very tempting to click on, but the whole point of me doing this is so that way I could read it myself. So... <laughs> Without further ado, Things Laporte says during the war. The big thing at the end. The navigators tell Laporte that Indus is falling from the sun. Falling into the sun. Think about the difficulty of it. On Earth, Mars, the moons of Jupiter, the suns want you. The sun wants you, but it cannot have you. He slips sideways fast enough to miss. This is the truth of orbit. A hand-me-down birth rate of philosophy between your world and the fire. You never think about it. Unless you want to fall. Then you need to strip... Then you need to strip all that speed away. Navigators call it killing your philosophy. Velocity. Killing, again. Laporte's not sure whether this is a any kind of funny. Come on, brain. Work with me today. <clears throat> It takes more thrust to fall into the sun than to escape out of, out to the stars. Indus made a blind jump, fleeing the carnage, exit velocity uncertain. And here they are, falling. They are the last of Indus's pilots, and there is nothing left to fly. So Laporte and Sim sit through the empty briefing room and play caps. The ship groans around them, ruined hull, protesting the efforts of any of the damaged control crews, racing to revive engines and jump drive before CME radiation sleets through tattered armor and kills everyone on board. What do you think our dosage is? Laporte asks. I don't know. Left my badge in the bunk. In my bunk, Sim breaks her sweat-soaked hair, selects a cap, and eats ants. <sighs> Red emergency light on her collarbone, on the delta of muscle there. Saw the whole damage control party asleep in the number two causeway. Radiation fatigue. So fast? That's bad, boss. Laporte watches her captain. Pale, lanky daughter of the marinas sprawled across three sheets of the sh half shred triangle of her flight suit. It makes a fearful. The <laughs> It makes a fearful search for damage, radiation poisoning, or worse, a deeper sort of wound. In the beginning, Sims was broken, and Laporte saved her. A truth Sims has never acknowledged, but must, must know. And she saved <clears throat> Laporte, oh, in turn, by ferocity, by hate, by being the avatar of everything Laporte didn't know. <clears throat> And here, in the sun glare, Laporte is afraid that the saying's been undone. Not that it should matter, but... Not that should this... Not that it should matter, this concerns of heart. But they'll all be dead soon. When they'll all be dead soon. Hmm. Apparently, my brain does not want me reading today. <sighs> And here, in the sun glare, Laporte is afraid that the saying's been unsaid. Not that it should matter, this concern of hearts, when they'll all be dead so soon, but... Hey, Laporte says, catching on. You sneak, boss. I call bullshit. Got me. Sims pushed the bottle cap. <clears throat> ARD slash AE-002 anti-radiation, it says. Across a little tremble in her fingers. Not so severe. They're all too busy to sleep. The cap the cap's game is an unbuntu buntu game. A child's game. A kill time game. An I'm afraid game. Say nothing, truth or lie. See if your friends call it right.
It teaches you to see other people, Martin Mando, during a visit, ch childhood visit, told her that. That's why it's so popular in the military. Disciplined killing required dehumanization. The Caps game lets soldiers reclaim, reclaim shared subjectivity. You're go, Morgan, Sim says, shuffling her pile of ARD slash A dash 002 caps. The call sign might be a habit, might be a reminder, we're still soldiers. I think I was in CIC. I think I saw Captain Swarenson tearing up uh, over tearing up over a picture of Captain Cry Mayton. Yang Z skipper. Swarenson's comrade. Lost. Since face arms up. I don't want to talk about anything that just happened. Is that a call? No. Of course it's true. Laporte stands up and says and say, fuck this. Laporte wants to stand up and say, fuck this. Fuck this stupid game. Fuck the rank insignia. Fuck the rules. We're falling into the sun. There's no rescue coming. Boss, I... But what would she say? It's not as simple as the obvious thing. And boy, it's obvious. Not about lust or discipline or loyalty. Bigger than that. Truer than that. Full of guilt and fire and salvation. Because what she really wants to say is something about about how Sims is important, right? But that's not it. That's not big enough. Laporte can't get her tongue around it. She doesn't know how to say it. Sims closes her. Oh. <clears throat> Sims closes her eyes for a moment. In the near distance, another radiation alarm joins the. Thurndy. Thur Thur Odi. Thurn Odi. <clears throat> Things Laporte already knows how to say. I'm going to kill that one, yes. I killed him. Say it like this. Morgan Tally Bandit, knife advantage. Have pure pre pressing now. Guns, guns, guns. And the ship in her sights, Silver Dart, Atalanta, built under some Built under some other star by hands not unlike her own, the fighter and its avionic avionics and torch and weapons and its desperate skew as it tries to break clear, the pilot too. They all come apart under the collie gun hammer, the pilot too. Blossoming Shapno, spiel of fusion fire, behold Laporte's star marker. Some of the color in the flame is human tissue atomizing. She made her first kill during the fall of Jupiter, covering Third Fleet's retreat. Sometimes rookies fall apart after they're first eaten up by guilt. Laporte's seen this, but it's a cry scream puke cycle never but the cry scream puke cycle never hits her, even though she's been afraid of her own compassion even though her call sign was almost flower girl. Instead, she feels high. There's an Ubuntu counselor waiting on, s on the Solaris, prepared to debrief and support pilots with post-kill trauma. She waves them away. 20 years of Ubuntu education, cherish all life hammered into the metal of her, all meaningless. I'll waste it. The high says, born killer. She was still flying off the Solaris here. Can't cast him on her wing. Still hadn't met the Sims yet. Who is Lorna Sims? Naomi Laporte. <clears throat> Thinks about this. Puzzles and probes and sometimes it's a joy and sometimes it hurts. Sometimes she doesn't think about it at all, mostly when she's with Sims, flying, killing. Maybe that's who Sims is. The moment. A place where Laporte never has to think, never has the chance to reflect, never has to be anything other than laughter and killjoy. But that's a selfish way to go at it, isn't it? Sims is her own woman, impatient, profane, ferocious, and Laporte shouldn't make an icon of her. 
She's not a lion, not a war god, not some kind of oblivion Laporte can curl up inside. A conversation they have after a sorty long after they saved each other. You flew like shit today, Morgan. That's so, boss? Squared off in the shower queue, breathing the fierce stink of pilots and Indias and Indus crew all waiting for cold water. Sims, the pylon and the crowd and dark little Laporte feels like a raven roosting on her. You got sloppy on your e poles, Sim says. Slipped into the threat envelope twice. I went in to finish the kill, sir. Calculated risk. Not much good if you don't live to brag about it. Yet here I am, sir. You sp you'll spend two hours in the helmet running poles and drags before I let you fly again. Sim puts a little crack of authority on the end of, of the reprimand and then grimaces like she's just noticed the smell. Flight Lieutenant Levy assures me they were good kills, though. Laporte is pretty sure Sims hasn't spoke to Levy since pre-flight. She grins toothsomely at her camp captain. And Sims exasperated grin back, though. <clears throat> Grinning back, though, shakes her head and sighs. You love it, don't you, she says. You're happy out there. Laporte pits her hands on the back of her head, an improper attitude towards the superior officer, and holds a grin. I'm coming for you, sir. She's racing Simmons for the top of the second fleet kill board. They both know who's going to win. I'm in trouble, says it like this. Boss Morgan, engaged defensive, banded on my sixth plane, has peer. And Sim's voice flat and clear on the tactical channel, so unburdened by tone or technology that it just comes, across, comes off like clean truth, an easy promise on a calm day, impossible not to trust. Break high, Morgan. I've got you. There's a little spark deep down under the calm, an ember of rage or glee. It's the first thing Laporte ever knew about Sims, even before her name. Laporte has a friend and a weak. <laughs> Laporte has a friend and wing wingman, Hesim. He killed a few people, cleaned ship to ship kills, and afterward he come back to the Solaris with Laporte, and they drink and shout and chase women until the next mission. But he broke, sectioned out, a psychological casualty. Cry, scream, puke. Why? Why Kasim? Why not Laporte? She's got a theory. Kasim used to talk about why war started, and how it would end, who was right, who was wrong, and fuck, who could blame him? Unbuntu was supposed to breed a better class of humans, meticulously empathetic, selfishly rational. Care for those you kill, mourn them. They are human too, and no less afraid. How could you think like that, and then pull the trigger? Ride the burst, guns, 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 and boom, scratch, bandit, good kill. So Laporte gave up on empathy and let herself ride the murder kick. She hated herself for it. But at least she didn't break. Too many people are breaking. The whole Federation is getting its ass kicked. After Kasim's sectioned out, Laporte pit in for a transfer to the frigate Indus right out of the bleeding edge. She'd barely met Captain Sims, barely knew her, but she'd heard Sims on fleet tech. Her the exhilaration and the fury in her voice as she held her squadron during the Meridian ambush in the fence of the Reyes station. It's a suicide posting, Captain Tuffler warned her. The Indus eats new pilots and shits ass, ash. But Sim's voice said, I know how to live with this. I know how to love it. I'm with you, Captain Sims. I'll watch over you while you go ahead and make the kill. She says like this. Boss Morgan, tally, visual, press. That's all it takes. A fighter pilot's brevity. brevity. Code is strict. Demanding form. 
Say as much as you can with as few words as possible. While you're terrified and angry and you weigh nine times as much as you should, like weaponized poetry, except that deep down your poem always says, we have to live, they have to die. For all their time together on Indus, Laporte has probably spoken more brevity code to Sims than anything else. People from Earth aren't supposed to be very good at killing. Naomi report call sign Morgan grew up in a sealed pate at an, in a sealed piece. The firewall defense that saved the solar system from alien annihilation 50 years ago also collapsed the soul serpentist wormhole, leaving the interstellar colonies out in the cold. A fistful of sparks scattered to the fi catch fire or gutter out. Weary walled in, the people of Sol abandoned Starflight and built a cozy nest out in the wreckage. The <coughs> Edenamic Monic Federation. Fed democracy underpinned by gentle stimulation guided unbuntu philosophy. We have weathered enough strife, Laporte remembers Martin Mando at the podiums in Hella's plan. Planetia for the 40th anniversary speech. In the decades to come, we hope to build a community of compassion and pluralism here on Seoul, a new model for the state and for the human mind. And then they came back. Not the aliens. Oh, no, no. That's the heart of it. They're still out there. In Enigmatic, vast, xenocidal. The Colonist Alliance, gallivanced by imminent annihilation, has to be ready for them. Ready at any price. These are our times. An older report listening to another broadcast. The Colonist <laughs> Ors test at the reopened wormhole. When, the neg when negotiations finally broke down, we must have Seoul's wealth and infrastructure to meet the coming storm. We appeal to your leaders in the spirit of common humanity, but no agreement could be reached. This is, this is a matter of survival. We cannot accept the Federation's policy of isolation. Necessity demands that resort to force. That was 18 months ago. A lot of people believe that the whole war is a problem of communication, fundamentally solvable. Officers on the Solaris off-duty saloon argue that if the only f only the Federation and the Alliance could just figure out what to say, how to save face and stand down, they could have found they could find a joint solution, a way to give the Alliance resources and manpower while preserving the Federation from <coughs> socio-economic collapse and the threat of alien extermination. It's the Ubuntu dream, the human solution. Captain Sins doesn't hold that to that though. A conversation they had on the Indus observation deck. But Laporte says she doesn't remember her words exactly or what she's responding to, but and anyway, she's ashamed to remember. The Alliance pilots are people too. Still that shit. Sims voice a thunder crack unexpected. She'd been a She'd been across the compartment, speaking to Levy. I won't have poison on my ship. The habit of a lifetime and the hurt of a moment conspire against military discipline, and Laporte almost makes a protest. Unbuntu says, Martin Mandho said, but Sims is already on her, circling, waiting for the outspoken new transfer to make one more mistake. What's the least reliable weapon system on your ship, Morgan? A whole catalog of options, the bestiary of the Federation's reluctant innovations least reliable, must be the Mulberry G GES-2. Wrong. It's you. Pilots introduce milliseconds of unaffordable latency. In, in a lethal combat environment, hesitation kills. Sims is talking to everyone now. Making an example of Laporte. She sits there stiff and burning, waiting for it to be over. If the admirality... Ugh. 
had its way, they pit machines in these cockpits. But until that day, your job is to come as close as you can. Your job is to keep your humanity out of the gears. How do you do that? Hate, sir, Levy says. Hate. Sins lifts her hands to an invisible throat. Bears down for emphasis as her voice drops to a purr. She's got millisec- She got- <sighs> She's got mil-spec features. Aerodyne chin. S surgical cheekbones. And Laporte feels like she's going to get cut if she stares. But she does. There's no people on those ships you kill. They have no lovers, no parents, no home. They were never children. And they will never grow old. They invade your home. And you're going to stop them by killing them all. Is that clear, Laporte? Willful, proud, stupid, maybe thinking that Sims would give her a s give her a slack amount of the first time they flew together, Laporte says. That's monstrous. Simmons puts ice on her. Full bore, all expect duration. It's war. Monsters won. The Alliance flagship feared by the Federation pilot and Admiral alike, the Atreus. Her missile batteries fired GTM-36 Block 2 EO's mun munitations. Memorize that name, pilot. Memorize these capabilities. The Atreus Dawn's- The Atreus Dawnbringers have a fearsome gift. Given targeting data, they can perform their own jumps, strike targets far across the solar system. The emphasis is over the horizon. The euphemism is over the horizon. <clears throat> the port used to wonder about that gun. The port used to wonder about the gun crews who would ride the EO's batteries. Do they know what they're shooting at when they launch a Slavo? Salvo? Do they invent stories to assure each other that the missiles are intended for vital military targets? When they hear about collateral damage, a civilian platform shattered and smashed into Europe, Europa's ice in the name of shipping denial, do they speculate in a guilty hush? Was that us? Maybe that's the difference between the Alliance and the Federation. The reason the Alliance is running, the colonists can live with it. She doesn't wonder about these things anymore, though. One night in the gym, the squadron gets to sparring in a round robin, and then Laporte's in the ring with Sims, nervous and half fixed on quitting until they get into it and slam, on, slam to the mat, grappling for the arm bar. Or the joint lock. Laporte feels it click. It's just like the dog fight. On the merge, pacing your strength exactly like riding a turn, waiting for the moment to cut in and shoot. She gets Sim Sims in guard, flips her, puts her bows in her throat, feels herself gr grinning down with the pressure while everyone else circles and hoots. Morgan, look at her. She's on it. Sim looks back up at her, and there's this question in her very wonderful eyes, a little annoyed, a little curious, a little scared. What are you? She rolls her shoulders, lashes her hips, throws Laporte sideways. Laporte's got no breath and no strength left to spin, but she thinks Sim's just as tapped, and the rush feeds her, sending her clawing back for the finish. Sims puts her finger up thumb cocked before Laporte can reach her. Bang, she says. Laporte falls on her belly. Oof, arg. It's important that Sims not laugh too hard. She's gotta maintain a command present. She's been careful about that since her first, first short, sorty. Sortie? Ow. <laughs> you need help, Captain Sims. Says, say, Say it like this. This is the first time they flew together when Laporte saved Sims. It happened because the letter Laporte received after her transfer to Indus was approved, but 
before she actually shuttled out to her new post. Fleetnet personnel. Taiga Tarn Notice Flight Lieutenant Karen NG Yangzi. Ing Sign Naomi Laporte Indus. Laporte. Just got word of your transfer. You may remember me from the Nauticus incident. I'm de facto squadron leader aboard Yangzi. Lawrence Lorna Sims. And I go way back. Admiral Netterba. Netra? Netreba? Netreba. Is about to select ships for a big joint operation against the Alliance. Two months ago, the Indus would have been top of the list, and Sims with it. But they've been on the front too long, and the scars are starting to show. I hear reports of a 200% casualty rate. Sims and Iad Levy are the only survivors of the original squadron. I hear that Sims doesn't give new pilots call signs, and that she won't let the the deck crew paint names on their ships. If she's going to lose her people, she'd rather not allow them to be people. It's killing morale. Sims won't open up to her replacements until they stop dying. <clears throat> and they won't stop dying until she opens up. I want the Indus with us when we make our move. But Netraba won't pick a sick ship. See if you can get through to Sims. Regards, Karen and G. Laporte takes this shit seriously. When Sims takes her out for a training sortie, a jaunt around the Mart Martian sensors perimeter, she's got notes slipped into the plastic map pockets of her flight suit thighs, gleaned from gossip and snippy fleet net posts, responds well to confidence and plain talk, rejects overt empathy, Accepts professional criticism, but will enforce a semblance of military discipline. No pictures, though. She knows she's overthinking it. But fuck, man, it's hard not to be nervous. Sims is her new boss, her wartime idol, the woman who might even get her killed. Sims is supposed to teach her how to live with, with all this crazy shit. And now it turns out she's broken, too? Is there anyone out here who hasn't cracked... Maybe a, a little of that disappointment gets to, into Laporte's worse. Afterwards, because of the thing that happened next, she can't remember exactly how she broached it. Professionally in, professional inquiry officer to superior, flirtatious breach of discipline, officially direct. But she remembers it going bad. Remember Sims curling around from amusement to disappointment. Probably thinking, great, Solaris is shipping me. It's discipline cases, so I can get them killed. Then the Alliance jumps them. Four Nyx, a wolf pack, hunting down the stragglers. Bone white metal cast the in shark shapes. Shadows in the light of their own fusion stars. Sims, her voice a cutting edge, a winged unopinion, shredding all the weight of death that she carries. Morgan, lead. Knock it off. Knock it off. I see jump flash. Then it's two by two. Then realizing, as Laporte does, that they're not getting clear. That hope's going to be too long coming. On my lead, Morgan, we're going in. Get your fangs out. And Laporte puts it all away, seals it up like she's never been able to before. Just her and thirty ton and the thirty ton can cantori cantori beneath her and the woman and and her wing. On her wing. They hit the merge in a snarl of missiles and counter and countermeasure. And everything after that blurs in memory. Just spills together in a whirl of acceleration days and coil gunfire until it's pointless to recall. And what would it mean anyway? You don't have to. You don't remember love as a series of acts. You just know I love her. So, it is here. 
They fought, and it was good. And damn, yes, she loves Sims. That much has been apparent for a while, but it's maybe not the kind of love that anyone does anything about. Maybe not the kind it's wise to voice or touch. She remembers a few call- she remembers calls back and forth, grunted out through the pressure of acceleration. All brevity code, though. What does that mean outside of the moment? Two gunships off Yangtze arrive to save them. The Alliance fighters bug out down a ship. Laporte comes back to the service, shaking off the, the narcosis of, of the combat tracts, and finds herself talking to Sims. Sims talking back. Sims is laughing. That was good, she says. That was good, Morgan. Damn. Indus comes off. Indus comes off the lines less than 12 hours later, yelling her patrol slot into another f free gate. S Captain Sims takes the chance to drill her new pilots to exhaustion. They begin to loathe her so profoundly they all eat a knife just to hear one word of her approval. Admiral hmm. Netraba, impressed by Indus's quick recovery, taps the frigate frigate for his special tax task force. Laporte knows her intervention made, intervention made a difference. Knows that no Sim felt the same exhilaration, fighting, flying side by side. And maybe, she thought, I've got to keep this woman alive. Sims just needed to believe she could save someone. Ow. I wonder if I can finish this. Alliance forces this... Well, actually, no, I'm not going to be able to finish this today. We'll pick this up in another video. Already halfway down the page. This should only be like, what, two, two videos? Anyways, it's pretty interesting so far. That's it for today, stars. If you liked the video, please give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already to join our wonderful galaxy. Comment down below and I'll get back to you in some way or another. And remember, we're all made of the same cosmic dust, so be nice. Kate, love you. Bye!